बट वाई वुड यू ब्लेम योर मदर वॉन्टेड शी डू सर वाई मतलब बिकॉज शी वॉज केयरलेस इट वॉज माई एग्जाम इट वॉज माई टाइम आई हैड स्टडीड फॉर एट लॉन्ग मंथ फॉर दिस वन थिंग एंड जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ हर केयरलेसनेस आई वॉज हैविंग टू सफर I was having to dedicate my time and energies to something that wasn't my main goal. So today my guest is Dr. Anushka Agarwal, whose story is actually filled with lots of ups and downs. She started with an enormous rank and then secured a seat in an Apex Institute. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for inviting me to do this podcast. So all I'm bringing to the table today is my story of my journey from a rank of fifty-five thousand to a rank of one thirty-three. and uh, i would attempt to tell you how i got there neat 2020 my rank was 55000 <laughs> and that came as a huge reality check what i've realized is just being a good student throughout mbbs doesn't cut it with neat pg it is a is a examination with cutthroat competition and you can't just assume ki mujhe to sab kuch aata hai i'm going to make it through you have to sit down and study specifically for the exam <laughs> otherwise you're never going to make it there are thousands like you in different colleges who are going to be toppers in their colleges but that's not good enough not for this exam and i realized that i had to pull up my socks and i had to start preparing and even then my parents thought that i should take a seat in a private hospital okay so uh, for people who are listening Uh, she she comes from a decent family where the parents can actually support her in terms of financially buying a pg seat for her matlab bina kuch kaam kare if i was getting a seat in a private hospital and i was getting that degree that would have been great but it wasn't acceptable to me on some level to know that i hadn't put in any effort to get there yeah, but at the same time <laughs> but at the same time let's be very very honest here Uh, you know when you come from a privileged background uh, it it has its perks don't no don't, don't mind me don't hate me for this there is there is enormous mental relaxation in terms of the amount of effort you need to put in because you know that there is a safety net the amount of effort you need to put in is exactly the same but it's just that you have less stress isn't it i would never deny that fact sir i definitely agree with you uh, coming from a medical background has its perks uh coming from a so called privileged background and that being said i want people to know at the end of the day it was me who had to sit day after day and slog it out it was me who had to you know be prepared for the exam and be prepared for whatever result that came now let's come to the you know the, the prospect of your preparation what was your approach i mean you obviously didn't take the seat at 55000 that is you decided to take a drop year So how did you move forward what was your drop year strategy So I was an emergency house staff but soon I realized ki mere do din waste ho rahe the and however hard I tried I couldn't study more than 8 hours a day and listening to all the toppers studying for 14 to 16 hours a day I realized I could never match up to them with these stats and knowing these facts I turned a deaf ear to everyone who was talking about my marriage and so on and so forth and i just quit my job so this is another important lesson that all of us should learn who are considering a drop year or who have taken a drop year if you have finances to support you till you write the exam the best thing anyone can advise you is to take a break and devote your time to studying because you just cannot manage studying with the dedication and commitment it requires at this scale of competition with a job and that is a hard pill to swallow and the moment you swallow it your life will become smooth you cannot juggle between job and study this requires complete isolation and dedication to execute this uh, exam because the competition is stiff this year there are approximately 1.8 lakh people appearing for this exam you had the whole day to yourself uh, you must have had so much fun studying what did you go about doing <laughs> So I started very slow and I started by setting achievable targets for myself every day and uh, I used to mark my progress on a calendar and around this time I was searching for some guidance and I started following you and I realized some very very vital mistakes that I had made I hadn't taken any GTs 
and that was one turning point for me because i realized that gt is not only test your memory but also your concepts and your ability to concentrate for 3 and a half hours at a stretch and i tried to look for many high yield topic lists and i found so many of them but nothing really helped me at the end it was just those glycolysis and gluconeogenesis ke cycle ke enzymes <laughs> that i kept getting wrong in every and each gt that got etched in my memory and that is how i got them right in inset so to sum up at the end of the day what helped me was my own experience as they say sir good decisions come from experience but experience comes from bad decisions so how did making mistakes in your grand tests actually help you it's funny that you would say that sir because I realized that my mistakes in the GTs were actually those high yield topic lists that I was searching for all throughout. Exactly. I mean what basically what you're trying to say and for people who are listening is that the mistakes that you made were the topics that you needed to focus on more or were the topics that were heavily tested in the exams and that's how you made your high yielding topic list. But apart from that when people ask me about what my strategy was I really don't know what to tell them. I did all the typically wrong things that I thought toppers would do. I used to, you know, write the MCQs instead of bookmarking them. Okay. I bought the notes. I used to study one subject throughout the day because I thought the continuity helped me. But clearly I was wrong. You only learn from the mistakes you make because see even though you get, you know, guidelines from your seniors or people who have um, cracked this exam, there is only so much they can say. Every time a topper says, ki, you know, kuch nahi hai yaar, concepts padh lo, kuch nahi hai yaar, ye kar lo. it's just that they're discounting their advantages in life or their uh, you know points of leverage in life so this is what i suggest listen to everybody and you know adapt what works for you best because everybody is different and the faster you realize this in your preparation i think uh, the better definitely sir i would always say that a single thing doesn't work for two sets of people um as i would say these popular revision strategies that so many thousands of kids follow um never really worked for me i couldn't ever stick to any of them but uh, the maro planner was what worked for me i realized that you know i had a specific number of days that i had allocated for revision and even if i exceeded it with one subject i would try to make it up with another and that is what helped me with my revision my first two revisions at least 55000 wale 100 ke paas kaise aate hain that is what the world needs to know now <laughs> so sir uh, this answer i'm not sure i can give you but i can tell you that one of the things that really really helped me was your 80 20 video which i finally tweaked to my own needs i allocated a certain amount of time for each subject and i made a list of topics according to how they had appeared in the exam at what frequency <laughs> i gave more weight to the first and second year subjects because according to me the questions from them were more answerable for a huge subject like surgery I used to pay attention to only general surgery and for pediatrics, neonatology and so on. The most important fact about this strategy was that when the number of hours for that subject was over, I would move on. It didn't matter how many topics were left in that list. I had to move on to the next subject. It was extremely difficult to leave topics, but I had to be satisfied with knowing that at least I had covered the most high yield topics. I can't stress this enough. a lot of people focus on covering everything or as much as possible but then they don't focus on the things that are very frequently asked the moment you start focusing on the things that are frequently asked you start getting more return of the time that you invest in studying and that is what you have so gracefully done anushka i like that you utilized whatever little time you had for that subject investing it in learning the things that have a high frequency of being tested rather than struggling to memorize or understand some remote fact or concept respectively when did you start following me and why would you follow someone like me on all the social media platforms so i uh, simply start following you on instagram uh just to get updates on the exams and uh, i uh, i found out soon enough that the quickest way of getting real news was from your account some way or the other sir you have been such a great guide and i am very very thankful for you please don't ever stop being this invisible guide you are for so many of us out there I mean, every time i ask this question to the guests on my show it just makes me 
so emotional i mean i really don't know how to respond to that other than thank you and whenever you say things like this it really motivates me to continue doing what i do it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of time but it is worth it when someone actually feels that change in their life for everyone listening i hope you found some value from today's session comment your questions and suggestions below i will try to talk about them in my next podcast till then take care bye bye